Hello, hello, hello. This is Attorney Mike Gravel coming to you from Chicago. As usual, this stream is most definitely Natalie's fault. We've, we've got... We've got a spicy TPO. I've seen about one minute of it, but from what I've seen, it looks promising. I'm confident. I'm confident that it gets worse. I'm told it does. I got a couple. I got a couple other clips too. The one thing that's not Natalie's fault. You, you may. You may know this if you've been around here a while. I've got a. I've got a Gujarati High Court fetish. <laughs> we're gonna let. We're gonna let them take us in. The, the, the judge there has exactly one question. That question is, how much can you pay? And he will not be diverted. May I pay the lordship? May I pay your lordship? There's an I for stay your lordship or be uh, order passed by the family court, your lordship. The stay. Because your lordship, the order that you pass, uh, uh, your lordship, the petition is that means that to pay 10 lakh rupees as permanent alimony, your lordship. But, but on my side, the lordship is uh, too high for me. Your lordship, just just stay your lordship. Your lordship, I will pay the other amount, your lordship. How much would you, let us see, what is the amount? Maybe 10 lakhs, your lordship. So how much can you pay? Your lordship, I have some policies, your lordship. I can break that policies, your lordship. I am paying a joint policy of both the petition and the wife, your lordship. And one policy is in my name. Uh, uh, Madam, I'm not saying how many policies or what policies. Where? How much can you pay? It's not. Uh, it's about. Uh, it's not. Uh, your I'm not able to pay ten lakhs, lakhs, but less than ten lakhs, I will able to pay your lakhs. How much? How much? Less than ten lakhs is how much? One rupee, two rupee, two so lakhs. eight lakhs, nine lakhs. Three how much? Lakhs, three lakhs, your lordship. Not more. Two lakhs. Is that you? Yes, sir. Okay. Is that you? Yes, sir. Okay. Uh, let's see. This is an initial appearance. You were indicted here recently for the stage of felony of unauthorized use of a motor vehicle. Do you understand that? Yes, sir. Okay. You need to get a lawyer. What are you doing about that? Nothing, no. Well, you need to get a lawyer. You need to get a lawyer. Yes, sir. Everybody's got to pay for their problems. Yes. Me, you. So we'll, you need to get a lawyer or else if you want to represent yourself, that would be catastrophic. I wouldn't advise that. You need to get somebody to help you. Uh, where are you working right now? Oh, for a job in company out of Dallas. Do you still live on 131 East Brant? Yes, sir. In Roe Bridge? Yes, sir. Okay. Well, I'm going to give you four weeks to get somebody in the game. Higher lawyer. You don't have a chance if you, if you represent yourself. We all know that. I mean, you're looking at up to two years in the state jail. You would, you really wouldn't have much of a chance representing yourself. Do you have any legal training at all as a lawyer? No, sir. No. In the city of Louisiana, this is Texas. The kind of rules are different. You know, you need some help by someone, and it, it costs. It's it's not. It's unfortunate, but it's the way it is. Uh, but I'm going to give you four weeks if you hire somebody. Uh, lawyers all around here, you know, want to talk to them. Uh, hire somebody, then you might not have to be back here next uh, time in four weeks. But if you don't have a lawyer and they didn't. Say, Do you don't show up. Attorneys? You need to show back up. Do you have state attorneys? Yeah, that's what he is. He's the prosecutor. He's Do you have state attorneys? Yeah, that's the one who's prosecuting you. You need a defense attorney. If you're asking, oh, good Lord. Prosecutor. No, <laughs> Why would I do that? You're employed. Just like me, I got to pay for my mistakes. You know, I got to pay. And we all have to write checks for each problems. And you're, you're just like everybody else. I, this I'm a taxpayer, too. Uh, yes, sir. Look, we can't, uh, I'm not going to try the case right now. The process works in a certain way. You've been charged. I didn't charge you. The grand jury charged you, but it fell in this court. So then we're going to hear it out one way or the other. Get a lawyer to help you. It's like you're lost in the woods. You need a guide. And these lawyers are guides. Now, you can hire somebody in Louisiana, but they need to have a, the ability to practice in Texas, to, or else you're not—you're wasting your money. 
Uh, but brokerage in that farm. So here in Southeast Texas, uh, we got a lot of work. And I'm going to give you four weeks. Get a reset. Thank you. Right there from that lady. Yes, sir. Give them, if you hire somebody, give them that little, that paper so they know when your next court reporting date is. Court. Um, as far as deleting the messages where she was calling me out of my name, um, demanding um, things to be done, which I hadn't done basically to be like her and, and like her servant in the home. Um, um, also, I, I know it's acts of uh, family uh, violence, but she was um, loudly masturbating, trying to like push me into like her sexual abyss, you know, um and also did she threaten me for calling the police like once they would leave saying that she was on probation um and things that would interfere with the um law enforcement doing their job pulling me into her okay abyss. so i all of that was more testimony mm -hmm. than a question um <laughs> i will ask the final perform. one that, you, that the one that you just ended with um madam miss <laughs> clark did you threaten the police and interfere with them doing their job when they were called no the police came to our house mm, over 11 times in two weeks they never arrested her or myself no um uh, no not at all um not at all. Okay. All right, Miss Wynn, any more questions or testimony? Oh, oh. I have four. Hold on, this, this on is for Miss Wynn. What did you say, Miss Clark? I said I have four percent. Hold on, I'm gonna try to get to a. I don't. I had a hundred percent on my phone earlier. Okay. <laughs> just we just ran did. my phone down. Hold on mm -hmm. one second. <laughs> <laughs> we do need the fly lawyer. I think he can straighten all this out. <laughs> I got a charger, but it's a what's the name charger? I'm right here by an outlet. I'm that just gonna try to get to that. Would be a fantastic Wait. name. Okay. Just one second. I'm sorry. At this point, Ms. Wynn, do you have any questions you would, and you just need to unmute, do you have any questions you would like me to ask the petitioner specifically about what she testified to? Yes, I I had submitted some evidence um, of me um, being admitted to the um, hospital. Also, um, knowing me prior to May 1st, um, Wait, so hold on, hold on, hold on a second. This is not the time for you to testify. We will have that time in just a moment. This is the time to ask specific questions about what she testified to, to her. So do you have a question you want me to ask or you just want to testify yourself? Do I have specific questions like a, like a cross-examination type of yes. questioning? Yes. <laughs> All right. Um, it's a hearing. Uh-huh. I mean, I you can... I, you can ask if she lied. Um, I I kind of toned no. out a little bit because You're she was lying in her statement. Okay, so hold on. So I, asking her if she lied is not really appropriate question. This is more a question to ask about any facts testified to. So it has to be kind of fact specific. Otherwise, you will have a chance to testify yourself as well as have a chance to um, it, at the end an argument. Okay. You can ask her. If she knew me, you did ask her if she knew me prior to um, um, May 1st. Um, you can you can then um, say how was I able to stay there in April um, and also meet with the gentleman who's probably in the car with her um, now because there, there's, there's frequent guests at the house which she uses as bodyguards or she tries to use them as Intimidating factor. Okay, hold on, hold on. This isn't the time to test. So let me ask this okay. question first. So, Miss Clark, um, 
did you said you testified that you met you didn't know her before may 1st but she is did she stay with you in april no i did not know her before may the first we okay. have a this is the agreement we went to the bank and had it notarized it has a steal on it Okay, so I don't know their names yet, but we've got clueless chest tattoo and crazy eyes. Neither one of them has a clue. What day did you do that? <laughs> this was done on May the 1st. Now, we so, wait, let me ask you something. Let me ask you something. Mm -hmm. So, if you went, so you did that the day you met her? No. No, we did meet the day before or maybe 2 days before, but that was it. It was no I did not know her. How long have you known of her? Um, I can go on my phone and see the day when we first started talking. Okay, the day so when she came. How long till you pulled her into the abyss? That's my question. Approximately, approximately when was that? Um, let me look at the calendar. Hold on one second. So she came to look at the room on the 19th of April, but I went out of town to Vegas. So I actually met her on the 19th, the day before I went to Vegas. But How did y'all get in touch? We met through Craigslist. Okay. Oh, That's boy. Right. Yes. Oh, boy. So it was an initial meeting at first. Yes, I had forgotten about that. There was an initial meeting, but this lease and everything came into fruition on the first because okay. it had been a couple of days and I needed to go out of town first. It was a best okay. first sight, Judge. So, Miss Wynn, she she now says that there were some interactions between y'all prior to May first, um, but I didn't but know. She her. said you did not stay there. So, um, do you have any questions? Any more questions before you testify, if you choose to? Uh thank you, Your Honor. That was a great examination to show that she is not exact on her facts that she's um giving also she had asked me to stay and oh my god this is w way worse than i anticipated Th this rivals the, the the jamaicans i have a link to that video in the description below oh lord <laughs> thanks for thanks for that great cross-examination judge <laughs> Oh. When she asked me to stay, was she intoxicated and trying to sleep with me when she first met me? Okay, I'm not sure how this is relevant. <laughs> there we go. All right. You... She's a 304, Judge. I, I do it? so wish, Your Honor. <laughs> okay, yes. thank you. So tell me, um, no. what prompted you thank filing you. your petition requesting an order of protection after you were served? I was prompted to file my petition actually prior to being served. Ooh, your question was after. I filed it prior to being served. It was lost in translation. Um, oh, yeah. Because well, I'm just saying prior. it looks like um, you were served on June 2nd and your petition was filed on June 8th. Yes, Your Honor. But I, I spoke with the Women's Resource Center and um, um, a few employees there, they filed it incorrectly because um, as Ms. Clark uh, conveniently stalked me, that I was a similar situation where I met somebody online and I was renting and they wanted to control my finances. And I filed a petition in DeKalb County at the home that I owned. And um, it was um uh it was it was granted to me actually right. Your Honor. so hold on are you talking about another case that doesn't involve this petition or this response i did Ms. clark no i was given another case number <laughs> pertaining with lakia clark but it was this it was it was um it was um, mis misfiled because of my last name already in the court's system. 
Okay, so when did so you it, when did you file? I initially filed the beginning of May. Okay. And why did you file? I filed a petition of protective order to Ms. Lakia Clark because once I started um, ending up for myself, not paying for things from her, for her, um, not going out of my way, um, she became abusive, demanding, um, irate, emotionally unstable. She became physically and verbally abusive. Um, I no longer had access to any of the amenities or the house. Um, she wanted me to be isolated in my room. She talked to me as if I was um, inferior, um, okay, as if so I was I'm her pet to, chihuahua that she- I'm gonna ask you to focus being rude, disrespectful, that sort of thing is bad roommate behavior, bad person behavior, but it's not necessarily access. Oh, and our mic's going out. I want to hear more about the Chihuahua. Yes, the incident that she, um, she like she became very dangerous, and and the stove she would she would throw my stuff off the stove over the area. Yeah, it's odd. Um, it's she odd. She pushed me. Um. She kicked me. She like pulled my hair. She forcefully pushed me off the bed. Um, and this this all happened like she was dressed up to go out, you know, again trying to impress me or what have you. And and then um, I I called I called the cops. But if you look at the records, if I provided that information, the cops were called without her knowledge. When she was aware that I called the cops because she started to assault me. In that moment, I just called the cops in that moment, and you can hear her just yelling in the in, in the background, belittling me, assaulting me. And um, then they came to the residence, and that's the initial time where I told them that she was, you know, stealing from me. What provided that? So around what date was this? Um this date was around um, Mother's Day because she had like she had researched me and she had said foul things about my children, about whatever she had found out about me, saying that I lied, that I was previously assaulted, um, which I unfortunately I was. And she she followed suit as well. And I just allowed the abuse to continue because I always felt if I retaliated, I had no grounds to stand on. So I just let her vent and use me as a punching bag. And um, okay. um, have you submitted uh, any evidence that you want the court to consider? Um, yes, Your Honor. Okay, I did what submit. Is that? Uh, I submitted evidence of her um, pushing me off the bed, removing the bed from me, which I had purchased. Um, I didn't bring anything in there because she had started stealing from me. Um, and then the items that I did leave in there, she stole those as well when I was being treated by the EMS because after I had been assaulted from um, a roommate that had sexually assaulted me and produced children, thank you, okay, I, I, she assaulted me. She, she like, these people, mm -hmm. She, uh, I'm sorry. I, I, I'm, I'm just trying to gather my myself, Yana. Okay. So, so what um, evidence is it that you said you want me to look at? I had, um, I had provided evidence of her, um, um, pushing me. I also have other evidence. What is, of her, what is like, that evidence of her pushing you? She is, um, pushing me off. Um, like pushing me, like you know, kicking me, yelling at me. Um, is, here is, it a is video? her. It's I, I did attach a video. Okay, and, um, so is that there may I don't when did you send that in? I I sent that in. Um I believe I submitted um if I didn't submit this in today, it may not have been submitted within the, the 24 hours because I had another case that I had responded to. So all that evidence where my where my um what? petition was granted, my ex parte hearing was granted, mm -hmm. I had submitted the appropriate information. So when um, did you submit that? I had submitted that the day after I had spoke. In Wait, she's got all this mixed up with another TPO? That, that's actually not even surprising. For the judge, I believe, I, I gathered so, Madam some Clark, information. Do we have any evidence in this case from that? Judge, I'm not showing a video. I am showing like a picture collage. 
Okay. There's a picture collage. There's no video that has been in, submitted that they've received. So the pictures you can see where um, Miss LaClea Clark, she had punched me. She had pulled out my hair. She had like jumped on my back. She had went for knives. Um, the incidents where she's we're talking about her phone, I, I grabbed my phone. She had, everything had dropped my wallet, everything that was in my hand. She just surprised, attacked me. Um, and I, I, I called the, the police. Um, and if you can see of all the police records, I have been the one calling the police. Um, anytime she's, there's, there's never been a time. Well, I, I didn't look at the police open records or anything like that. So I didn't cross examine her and say, has she ever called the police? Because I didn't have any records stating that she did not, but I have been the one calling for help, claiming that I, you know, I'm abused. I have been robbed. I have been wronged. I have been scammed. I have been swindled. You know, I have been in this unsafe situation um, because I, I have seen injustice where at a blink of a time they can they can have you out on the street they can take everything from you and she started talking to me as if I was inferior she didn't know I owned homes they didn't know I owned cars she didn't know anything about me so let so me ask you this started, when you how long did this start after you moved into the the residence um well right uh very very quickly so like how I mentioned in April where she didn't want to mention that she had she had um <sighs> pushed herself which is something me. but i i i um i'm not she yelled at me because i'm not sexually active which i'm not um i'm that's i'm just i i just don't participate in like frivolous sexual escapades i just don't do that so she she was asking me to go out there were women that were approaching me there were women and men and she jealously handed me drinks and wanted me to pay and just wanted the attention you know I, I guess of what she considered suitors or um uh, of, of at that time and I actually I'm I'm really not a verbal person my voice was really hurting me so a lot of times she was just yelling at me and I wouldn't I wouldn't say anything I would just sit there while she was just blasting okay, so, obscenities so when did the the first act of violence occur the first act of violence I would say it's it it began um right before I actually signed got everything notarized the first act of, of violence and abuse and aggression what? presented itself then began went right before you got everything notarized um right right because I wasn't I wasn't going to continue because she was started requesting additional like she wanted my driver's number she wanted additional information and was forcing me and was calling people to have like bully tactics and I was reading in chase because I've also been a chase customer if you know if you're in a situation where people are extracting information from you in a split second where you don't have time to think if it's a scam or something like that it probably is just be careful so I just started to be more leery about about things and then she started to leave my door unlocked and um so the act you know, of violence happened before you moved in before i had for, before yes before i had um uh physically signed the lease she had presented acts of violence to make me sign the lease because i i started to like stray away from signing because how she was treating me what act of violence did she do okay, to make I, you, even, force you to sign the lease I'm not even buying she, that. She signed the lease under duress and then moved like in. Uh -huh. She was using coercion and threats. Coercion. And like, like just calling me out of my name, like trying to um, make the scales unbalanced, make me kind of like question, you know, why I was even asking her in the per like first place, just make me like question myself. Oh, oh honey, the scales are unbalanced. Um, I guess they call it like gaslighting. So I just, you know, made me question because I was just like, what's the odds of something bad is going to happen again in my life? And I figured maybe it is happening. So I would just. How long had really you known her at that point? I had knew, knew her for a few weeks. So why did you move in? Yeah. I moved in because that's, um, that's, I I was at that point, I was spending um, thousands of dollars on hotels <laughs> and um i i i wanted something more um like you know stationary something that can provide a little bit more longevity and she said she was looking for that and it, you know it, it was compatible at the time there was a few things that yeah um i was concerned about but i thought that i could possibly overlook giving my 
present circumstances that I had found myself in, it was basically just, I, I needed something to survive and allow my money to, yeah. um, to rest while I was also, um, gathering more, you know, work because as she had mentioned about, uh, you know, me being arrested, I was forced out of a five-star hotel in Atlanta where I paid and had first class flights and all this stuff because I, my kids are in a residence where I do not know they are being abused. They have been abused. And I contacted them when I was assaulted, when I was pregnant and they never arrested that person either. So I just had to move in a different way because once I was removed, misplaced from my residence I work for myself I wasn't actively making an income so just because I had a surplus of money didn't mean I was actually I had to budget that money so that money could work for me um so that I wouldn't be arrested because that's why I, I, I didn't know the address to even send any any kind of form of payments and or to have some kind of stability where I could get my children in an unsafe situation to get my cases heard in the first place so it wasn't as if I was a bad person I didn't assault anybody I didn't it just something that I have to fight in court. It's just something, it's just the plight of mine. It's just the peril that I'm just trying to overcome. Okay. Oh my God. Laird on top of all of this is her attempt to flex throughout, which is, it's really sad. So, Let's get back to this. So are you, are you asking to return to the apartment, even though she's the person on the lease and you're, I mean, is that what you're asking? I am asking that because I did pay in advance and I've spent thousands of dollars on hotels to the okay. point it's replen it's, um diminishing my funds and <laughs> the judge had granted me you know access there because i you know i did pay in the evidence that i did show and my my testimony so She's i just wanted points. a moment where i didn't have to think every day okay, have where's my herself. next dwelling going to be or just it, it's just very exhausting at this moment to you know be present every day when there's continuously like this um this this uphill battle that i'm facing okay um Madam Clerk, can you pull up the exhibit that you mentioned that may have been a collage of pictures? <laughs> just a minute. You'll have a chance in just a minute, Ms. Clark. It's it's entirely Natalie's so, fault. I'm, what I'm is just this? saying glory. <laughs> this is um um some of the injuries that I've sustained um from um Ms. Clark. All right. Um can you tell me when and what those are of what we're looking at in them? Yes, it's a uh, accumulation of um, of attacks. Um, I barely had these that I had because I did grab the cell phones. If I didn't grab the cell phones at that moment, I would have had nothing because she was trying to extract all the evidence that day because the police told me to film and record her. Um, that's her running into the bed. This isn't too bad. Uh, th thanks again, Natalie, for uh, sending me the clip. And she she buzzes. Uh, you know blurred this which is a good idea but it does it does show nothing too exciting but some some bruising or some injuries we don't know if it's related to this woman or not bathroom she stole items from me um that way you see her legs and that um that blue item um is that to the right or to the left i think that's um um like in between her legs that was actually me on the bed where she had pushed pushed me off um, I may actually have some footage of that, but I don't I don't think it's admissible in court because I didn't file it the proper way. But she forcefully pushed me off the bed. I've never put my hands on her. She she as you can see, my hands, I'm I'm begging her to get out of the room, to leave me alone. Um, she busts into the room. As you can see, I don't know if I'm enlarging it. Her dog is there. She had her dog there. She's yelling obscenities. This is me waking up. Um, again, I'm I'm in, I'm in a very non-threatening form and again i've always felt like i had to conform to society like even if if she mentioned me being transgender enough i'm I'm not a threat to anyone i don't uh yeah we all feel like we have to conform to society <laughs> welcome to the world i don't hassle but i've had to deal with racism like i said and it, it, it can be used if people don't know the entire story so i did i did just stay in that sit stay in that situation okay, we can take this down madam clerk thank you um, so what about that where she alleged that you kicked her down the stairs you mentioned in your questions to her that she provoked you into physical altercations what it sounds like that could have gone both ways at times from what your questions were and what she testified to can you tell me about that yes your honor i'm glad you clarified that because it's the way that i spoke so what i'm saying is she would push Thanks me for the endorsement 
I'm not saying that it provoked me to push her back. I did not. I constantly allowed her to push me, which gave her <laughs> cause and reason to feel as if I was not going to ever put my hands on her, which I did not have any intent to put my hands on her. I don't, I don't hit women. I don't, I just, I don't, I just, I don't, that's not what I do. When she attacked me, I, I, I don't, I don't, I, she, I don't know. I don't know if that's what women do. She just pulled my hair. She's just punching me and I'm allowing her to do this. She's literally on my back. She's literally on my person while this is happening. And, um, like she's bending my fingers. My, I, I still, my, I don't even have mobility in my fingers. She was scratching my hands. <laughs> she uh, was prying the, my car keys out of my hand. Um, just numerous things that she was doing and she just wanted to fight. She just wanted, I've, at that, I, I've dealt with females and usually that's a sign she just wants to get out that aggression, whether it be sexual, physical, she just has a lot of pent up energy and she just exerted it on me. So okay, I never- so tell engaged. me this, what about when she ran next door to the neighbor? <laughs> she exerted it on me. I was running out, I was leaving the, I was gone. I left the house to call the police. I phoned the police. <laughs> I, I called the police. I had the EMS and they I told me my heart it. was elevated. I, I, I also included notes from my my treating doctor. I had to get a, a, a CAT scan. I had to get my hand um, x-rayed. Um, I had to have pain medicine. I had to have ice because she was just like choking me on my neck. She was just huddled. She just wanted to just be all on me, scratching okay. me, everything. All right. Um, so, okay. So is there anything else you want the court to know about what you have alleged and what's been alleged against you? Um, I, I do, yes, Your Honor. I do want the courts to know that she has been um, painting me in an ill light. Um, I, I, am, I am like, you know, shy to speak because of what society may perceive, but I, I again, she wanted me in her home, I, but it was the point of where she wanted to take things from me. Um, also, um, I don't know. I'm just like a little distracted while I'm like watching. Like, okay, so this is the chance where Miss Clark will have a chance to ask me some questions. About this is the second time she just fades up mid sentence, and this time she says I'm a little distracted. The last time she said she's collecting herself. <laughs> And all it sounds like is she's making stuff up and her brain isn't fast enough to uh, to to make up the next part of the story. Be, uh, so she has nothing left to say. About what Miss Wynn has testified to. So, Miss Clark, do you have a few questions that you would like me to ask? Remember, this is I not sure. testimony. This is just ask specific questions. <laughs> I sure do. Okay, go ahead. What's the first question you would like me the, to ask? The first question is going to be... Did DeKalb County Judge Yolanda, hold on, Yolanda. Okay, so that, that's what they're actually doing. That's what the procedure is here. That She is having them ask what they want to do, translating it into something that, you know, that's acceptable under the law, and then asking the question for them. It's, it's, it's odd, but I understand why they're doing it. Wanda Barker Smith declare her mentally unstable. You don't right, say. Her question is, when would this have been? This was, I'm here with a sealed letter from DeKalb County, right here. I think Yolanda's on to something here. I, I got to be honest. So <laughs> it has to be submitted into evidence for me to consider it ahead of time, like it said on your notice. So what is the date? Just tell me what. The or... date is... February 22nd, 2022. Okay, so that was over a year ago. So ma'am, the question is just, I guess, as to the competence of the testimony, did, have you been declared mentally incompetent at some point? Um, to answer your question, Your Honor, Judge Yolanda cannot declare me. I was um, a pro se at the time when I was being um, harassed. My children had just been victims of sexual abuse. The Cap County had failed us on all fronts. I had called them when I was pregnant and I was a victim of violence. They didn't offer resources like the women's resources or TPOs. Again, me being 
you know, people trying to dig up dead bones or have me pay debts that I didn't even do. Like I had to sit there and uh, take the abuse, if I should say, from Michael Wynn, whoever she wanted to get these open public records from, anybody can see. I have pictures and I have incident reports and now he has, you know- So, so I understand arrest. that. I'm gonna, we're going too far into something. So just it, have, have, are you currently under any mental health? treatment no and i also also for me to be even like you said on testosterone i have to be mentally clear so i what people what people what, want to what? say if michael want to say my kids are confused about me being transgender that's a that's a personal problem okay my We're kids going will probably also be now. confused to know that they are conceived from rape and i was okay. intoxicated we don't need to go into assaulted. that that, that's just, not what's okay. before the court but i understand you're saying that's some oh, of the background no, no, no. okay hold on miss clark all right miss clark what is your next oh good lord she is the absolute product of a failed society it's that simple it's got she, she literally just got it all question you're muted all I wanted to know, I'm sorry, was did the judge have concerns about Ms. Wynn's mental health and stability as she stated in this when she lost her kids last year? Okay, I'm not going to go into why she lost her kids. If she's no, I, in, I'm just stating that she has a mental health issue. I, I understand also, that. And you've asked that question, and she has said that she was before the court based on different allegations. So there were some, so Ms. Wynn, okay. there were some. I, Back in 2022, there were some concerns expressed by a judge regarding mental health status. Is that correct? The judge had expressed Just concerns answer yes because or I no was first, and then you can explain. Yes, Your Honor. Okay. Okay. All right. And that may, I'll determine how much weight that that is given. Um, but right, because mental health could be the abuse that Lakia Clark was saying, calling me. Peculiar bull dagger. I, you know, I understand. Okay, Miss Clark, Miss Clark, do you have another question? I do. Go ahead. Did, did we ever discuss her having children? Because I never knew she had kids until after she left the home. So she's stating about her children and stuff. That's not a question. Did we ever dis discuss That's her family here. or children? Did I know that she was married or had children prior to 6 2? I can't ask what you knew, but did y'all ever have a discussion about her, your children, ma'am, prior to 62? Yes, because she was saying, she was talking about my kids being uh, mixed with Asian and talking about their eyes and doing a lot of things to incite riot, saying that's why my husband beat me and I made all these allegations. Talking very, very, and nobody should have to sustain that kind of talk about kids that she doesn't even know anything about. But like okay. I said, these are open records. <laughs> Okay, that's enough. That's enough. I can't. Yeah. All right. So next question, ma'am. Next question is going to be how's it going? Do you have today? a record of each of your last two addresses? You put cases on each person, yes or no? What have you filed against the past two against people who reside in the past two residents you've been at, Miss Wynn? The past two residents. The, the judge really is doing a nice job translating to sanity. I, I, I I'm impressed. Residents, um, I've I've lived a few places. I mean, I, it, the past two it, residences is, you've been at, have you filed something, a civil case against either of those past two residences? I mean, the past two can be since I was from two. She can. I mean, I, I can. I, I don't. The two have, places I mean, you lived like, before the one you prior. were in this case. Not not directly prior, not directly prior. I've lived other places, but you know, if she wanted to get every, every record that I've ever filed the TPO of people, because I, I have a record of allowing people to abuse me. If, if I you want to listen to the records, so okay. I've, All right, Miss okay. Miss Clark. Did you claim that the last residence that you lived in in Austell? The person that you were on the lease, did you claim abuse and that she stole your property and the same things that you're claiming against me? So did you claim it's, the same thing against uh, where you were living in Austell against the people you were living with there that you are claiming in this case? Uh, again, again, these are these are these are these are federal investigations because it was lost in the mail. So with the United <laughs> Postal Services, oh, um, their investigation. So. I but but my question is, 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 is the question was, did you 
file and claim the same thing against the people in Austell? Yes or no? Have first? people known that I had money and stole from me? Yes, I have. Did I have you, ma'am, ma'am, did you file a petition claiming the same things against people in Austell that were residing with? Yes, Your Honor. Okay, thank you. You, you can always explain afterwards, but you got it. I mean, the, she doesn't know the way to do it, but the judge did it well. Um, that is a fair question. Do you do the, Is this a pattern for you? It goes to credibility, and it, it makes a lot of sense. It, it, there's good thinking behind that. How to answer the questions? Yes, no, or I don't know. All right. Next question. Do you have a history of family violence within the last three years? Okay, I'm not going to allow that question unless it's with you and you have personal knowledge of it. So I Ms. do Clark, have personal knowledge of it. Were you involved? You were there to witness it? Oh, no, I wasn't there to okay, witness then, it. Okay, then I'm not going to allow that question. Okay. Can I go with the next question? Yes, ma'am. Were you arrested a month before moving in with me? Um, unless you were involved, that also is not relevant. Okay. Were you arrested? Are those me? pictures that you just shown with those? Did you do that to yourself? Are they fake? Because they're not on any of these agreements right here from when the police came to the house. Did the police tell you that those were old and that you were making them up? Yes or no? All right. Did the police tell you the pictures were old and you were making them up, Miss Wynn? No, you no, Your Honor. Okay. Next question. Why do you want to move in with a place? Why would you want to come back to someone who abused you and did all these things to you? All right. Why? I think that's already been asked in a different way. But why are you going back if she, the the residence was so, such a bad living circumstance? Yeah, she's asking why I'm seeking justice for myself. The, the same reason why I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm fighting for my children. I'm fighting because just like I said, just how she's in her home, just how I love, lost, you know, hundreds of thousands, a hundred thousand dollars in that home. That was a brand new home indicator, newer than her home. If she wanted, she's kind of trying to compare and say all these things or cars that I didn't have that I paid cash for. You don't even know anything about me. You know, you want to focus on the negative things and nothing that I've, I've done for myself, working for myself, things of that nature. I want to return because I paid for that. Or with this, with the civil hearing, you can return my funds. I don't even know your financial situation. So this can, is not the, this your... is not the place to get damages for breach of contract or anything like that. This is just intervention, family violence. Yes, Your Honor, it's, it's because I, I I paid, I paid to be at the residence, and it, there's no reason why I should have to be attacked. There's no reason why I have to be victimized. There's no reason why my belongings have to be stolen. There's no reason why I have to face um, homelessness or live outside because I did everything right. So I have to file within the courts. I have to have somebody try to dig up bones while we're on live. Anybody can watch this. That's why anybody can look up my name. That's why I do what I do because what am I going to do? Allow somebody like this to get me shot by the police? Or th these things are circulating in our community. You know, I've been around people who are advocates for people, community, disenfranchised people, marginalized people. I don't wish to put anybody in a situation, but I'm not going to allow somebody to victimize me or talk about my children that they have no knowledge of. And that's where she continues to overstep her boundaries and doesn't realize we just have a rental agreement or if she wanted me to help her with things with her job and filling up her tank and running errands with her and helping her out. That's out of the kindness of my heart. No way is that weakness and no way do I feel like I shouldn't be compensated or, or reimbursed or upheld with what I, I paid for. She doesn't get to just assault me. She doesn't get to talk about my children. She doesn't okay. get to talk Sam, about- I'm going to need you to talk, bring it down a little bit. I understand these are very difficult, but this is not the time to yell and scream. It is a time to politely, civilly, as best as possible, answer the questions. So this is about intervention of family violence. Do you have any more questions, Ms. Clark? Do, she stated several times we don't know each other. We do we know each other? I think she's already. I'm, I'm not sure. I don't understand okay. that well, question then, because that, that, my, what was hold question. on, hold on. What was testified to is y'all met on Craigslist, and then there was a lease, and then they lived together for a period of time. 
right? Okay. What about mean by no? Is there anything different than you mean by did you know each other? Meaning she keeps saying that I talked about her children, but I never knew this girl. I never knew she had children until she left. And okay. I started looking up her record. I never. So I think never she's saying you're talking about them now. Or, okay, so I understand what you're saying. You'll have your chance to testify. Um, so my next question is, is our, the room agreement that she signed, is it month to month with a 30 day written notice? To so vacate? that's not relevant to whether there's acts of family violence at this point. That's okay. relevant to a breach of contract or an eviction. Okay. Did she kick me down the steps? All right. What about, did you kick her down the steps? <laughs> there we go. Bingo. No, How did she end up at the bottom of the steps? When was she at the bottom of the steps? I, I Did I submit pictures of her kicking me and her pushing me down the steps? I mean, after all this, they're asking all this crazy stuff, and then she's really got a good question. Did you kick me down the steps? Okay, now we're now we're talking about some uh, violence between the two of you, which is the whole point of why we're here. So your testimony, she's making all of this up. She attacked me, yes, Your Honor, and I I didn't even believe that she would attack me. You know, I didn't even believe that she could attack me. What I for the, the remainder of the time, I'm having to hold this girl off of me from attacking me. She's like literally attacking me. What what I guess what made her feel like what when I stopped, like she just felt like she couldn't overpower me. But that that's none of her business to if I try to overpower me. She doesn't have to try me in that in that manner. Like that's what she wanted to do. So I, I don't I don't know. Well, and I asked her, is she bipolar? What kind of psychosis she's dealing with? Because why would somebody wake up in the morning, want to call somebody names who already gave you money, who is being nice to you? I, I filled up her tank, fifty dollars gas, buying her this. She she yells at me when I'm wants to get groceries, saying I'm supposed to be the man. I'm not. I didn't I didn't know I was signed up to be in a relationship with her. She was saying I was her girlfriend. I don't even uh, 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 adhere to those terms, or I don't agree to anything outside of anything. She like doesn't that. consent. All right. Any other questions, Ms. Clark? Uh, right there. Don't worry, we got all day. So she said she does not have any family violence, which she's not telling the truth about. Um, <laughs> and and to answer your question, like I you like I said, you don't know me. I'm a victim of, no, of abuse. I was put into the so, system. So hold up, we're not going to just start so offering. I, I, stop! Stop! So, no, everybody. When I speak, please do not speak over me. We're still in court. These are formal proceedings. Um, you each had a full chance to testify. I understand what you've said, Ms. Wynn, um, but there's also allegations that you have also been violent. And that's where I'm trying to figure out from both sides right now. Um, and so, Ms. Clark, do you have any more questions? Yes. Okay, Did she threaten ahead. to shoot me with my brothers at the house? Was her brother there when <laughs> you allegedly threatened to shoot her? No, Your Honor, and I, sh I should have asked that she submitted any, any evidence because I don't know if you're the same judge that she was actually granted the parte because I was actually surprised. I'm not, I, and I, it doesn't matter. Okay, we do it on testimony. Because... Hold on, hold on. Sworn testimony at the time of the ex parte hearing and how it happens. And then there's an opportunity for both sides to submit evidence. Right now, the only there there is you have instructions on how to submit evidence and I don't look at evidence unless and until it's brought into this hearing while we're having right now. Okay, so what's been presented is what I'm looking at. That's the only thing I've seen in this case. All right, go ahead, Ms. Clark. Do you have any other questions? Um, she didn't answer if she threatened to shoot me or not. I think she said no. Oh, okay. No, no other questions. I just, I, this process is a little okay. confusing. I went through um, <laughs> the Women's sure Advocate Center to, I didn't even get a thing about submitting any evidence or any of that. This whole Okay, it's on page is, six of the order that you get emailed. <laughs> okay. I looked well, at the order I, on page six. I, I, I didn't think about submitting evidence or any of that. <laughs> 
is beautiful. What okay. same place where the virtual? So hold on, y'all. I mean, why would you? Same place as the virtual <laughs> notice. There's two pages at the end. It also says how to submit evidence ahead of time. It should be submitted 24 hours ahead of time. It's the same notice as the Zoom link, and it was. It's part of the ex parte order. So if you have the ex parte order with the date on it, the back of the order has all that information. Okay. Well, I read the order and like I said, it's a confusing process. I actually put in days before I called crying and boo crying going up to the courthouse, boo hoo crying about this. And that's when Miss Ayana did it for me. She can testify how distraught I was. No, so that was boo hoo crying. I, I believe. I understand. You can testify how distraught you were. Okay, I hear what you're saying. And yes. I know this is a difficult I process. For people. To I know this I'm is sorry. a difficult process for people not familiar with the process, but I am limited by the law and the rules of evidence, even though we are pro se and not represented by attorneys here. Okay. So, um, all right. Yes, Your Honor. Based on everything I've heard, I do have concerns that if an order is not issued, there will be violence in the future between the parties. Um, based on the testimony, facts testified to by each side, evidence presented, and the particularities of the testimony, I am going to do something I don't normally do, but I have concerns in this case, given what I've heard from everyone. So I'm going to grant both orders but the first order 23 po 5137 lakia clark versus samaria nguyen that order both orders will be in effect for 12 months the other party cannot have any contact with the other party at all not direct not indirect not through text email calls anything um miss clark will be awarded the sole and exclusive possession of the residence. You cannot go back there, Miss Wynn. Um, you cannot contact her or come within 100 yards of her, except you will be given one time only to be arranged in advance with law enforcement on or before July 15th to go with, and the number will be on your order, to retrieve your remaining personal belongings, okay? Before that time, the parties are not to destroy either the joint property of the parties or either petitioner's property, all right, and not cancel any of the utilities or anything like that. Um, I'm not going to uh, order the Family Violence Intervention Program because it sounds like there was no intimate relationship here. There is no familial relationship. There was an abyss. And there is no... Um, don't forget about no the reason that the parties should have any future contact, no kids, nothing. So I'm not going to order the family violence intervention program. But while this order is in effect, neither party can possess a firearm under federal law under each order. All right. So, Miss Clark, your order will say that Miss Wynn has a chance when arranged in advance with law enforcement, escorted by law enforcement to get her personal belongings by July 15th. Miss Wynn, your order will say that you will have an opportunity to same thing, one trip only to arrange by July 15th of 2023 to get your personal belongings, okay? Um, there is not gonna be a compliance date because um, you will not be doing the family violence intervention program. You just need to stay away from each other except for that one trip arranged by law enforcement and escorted by law enforcement. Um, you will each get a copy of the order awarding in your case, and in the other case, um, to get a copy of the order against you, you will need to reach out to the clerk's office in a day or so, and they will get you a copy of that order. Okay. Thank you both. Um, I know this has been a lot in a very difficult situation. Oh, yeah, yes. And I hope things go smoother in the future. And Good. she's. Well, there you have it. There you have it. I thought that would be bad. It was so much worse <laughs> than I anticipated. <laughs> oh, yeah. I'm. Uh, I'm. I'm gonna close the stream and 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 uh, redirect to to Biggin for anyone who's interested. <laughs> I 
I wasn't I wasn't ready for this. I thought it was just gonna be kind of goofy. It, it it was it was off the charts. It was off the charts. <laughs> wow. All right. Thank you, Natalie. Natalie hooked me up again. Link to her channel in the description below. I don't know how she finds the time with her own booming channel. But uh, but that was a lot of fun. Thank you all for coming out. And for those of you who are interested, this will send you over to Biggins, uh, Biggins Chat over there. I'll see you soon.